Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I would like to uh, spend some time uh, talking about Apollonius problems in geometry. Well, as you understand, Apollonius is uh, a Greek mathematician lived a very long time ago, and he presented a certain number of problems. Um, well, some of them were solved by different people, including himself, uh, and um, they are they have su certain commonality um, as far as the problems is con are concerned. Uh, solutions are completely different, but the problems do have certain commonality. Um, well, this lecture is part of the um, advanced uh, mathematics course for uh, high school students. It's presented on unisor.com, and I would suggest you to watch this lecture from this website directly uh, because it has uh, notes and uh, and also there is a bunch of functionality uh, which allows you to basically self-study the whole course including exams anyway back to Apollonius okay so the problems which are um, currently um, uh, described as Apollonius problems are the problems of uh, constructing a circle which is tangential or passing through um, in case of a point which is tangential to three other um, elements of geometry elements are points lines and circles so if you have three elements of this set let's say three points or a point a circle and a line or whatever so if you have three elements uh, from this set, then your task is to construct a, um, a circle which is tangential to all these three elements. And in case of a point, it's passing through, obviously. Um, now, obviously, there are many different cases, like point, point, and point, or point, line, and circle, or circle, line, and circle, etc. So we will try to address all of them. Now, why I think this is a very interesting um, topic? Because um, in certain cases, um, it actually leads to introduction of a new transformation on the plane. What we had before, as far as the plane transformation, were <coughs> excuse me, transformations of symmetry and scaling, which leads to similarity. So, um, as far as uh, this new type of transformation, it's called inversion or symmetry relative to a circle. That would be a subject of our next, <coughs> excuse me, of our next lecture. And uh, this lecture is about a simpler cases of Apollonius problems. Now, simple cases are those cases where the given three objects are only lines and points. No circles are given. And you have to construct a circle which is tangential to all three of them. Well, obviously there are many different cases, like three points, two points line, one point, two lines, and three lines. These basically exhaust all the different possibilities of uh, having uh, points and lines as objects which are tangential to a circle. So let's just do it one by one. So the first is point, point, and point, and obviously we have to consider case when the circle goes through these points. <coughs> now, obviously um, there is no solution if three points are on the same line. You cannot build, you cannot construct a circle which is passing through these three lines lying on the same, uh, three points lying on the same line. But if they are not, we all know <coughs> that there is a very simple solution. If you have a triangle and you have to circumscribe a circle around this triangle, what you have to do is to build uh, perpendicular bisectors to every segment. Now, let's address this problem a little bit more accurately. Well, first of all, if you have two points, now locus of the points, so the set of the points, which satisfy um, the requirement of being 
equidistant from these two points is, as we know, a perpendicular bisector of this uh, segment between these two points. Now, we really have to address the proof of this. And proof is really uh, trivial. However, you have to consider two different theorems here. The theorem number one, that every point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant. And the second theorem is that any other point which is equidistant from these two lies on this um, uh, uh, perpendicular bisector. To eliminate cases like this, for instance, maybe this is also equidistant. So, to say that this line, the, the, the perpendicular bisector, is a locus of all points equidistant from these two given points, we have to prove both. That these are equidistant, and any other equidistant actually, uh, any equidistant point actually li lies on this uh, perpendicular bisector. Now, the proofs is, pr both proofs actually, are, are very trivial. Now, in case this is a perpendicular bisector, now, obviously, uh, since it's a bisector, this is equal to this, because that's the construction of the bisector. And perpendicular means that these are right angles, which means these are two right triangles, which have um, congruent uh, casualty, and another uh, casualty is uh, shared among them. So these two triangles are congruent, and that's why hypotenuses are congruent. Now, the the other theorem, so let's consider that this point is equidistant. How can we prove that this is on the perpendicular bisector? All right, let's think about it. If it's equidistant, so these are two points, and this one is equidistant, which means this is equal to this. Now, this is uh, isosceles triangle. In isosceles triangle, the uh, altitude and uh, and the median and bisector all are going along the same line as we know, right? So let's just draw this line. Okay, this is an altitude of this triangle, which means this is right angle, but it's also a median because it's an isosceles triangle, and that's why these two are equal in lengths, and that's why this is a perpendicular bisector. So we have proven that perpendicular bisector is a locus of all points equidistant, which means that if you have three points, A, B, and C, and you construct a, a perpendicular bisector of AB, and then perpendicular bisector of BC, since they are not on the same line, these are not parallel, which means there is an intersection. And since this is an intersection, let's call it P. I can say that PA is equal to PB because of this. And because P lies on this, PB is equal to PC. And since the, this type of equality is transitive, PBA is equal to PB, PA is equal to PB equal to PC. And therefore, since PA and PC are equal to each other, that's why P should actually lie on the perpendicular bisector to AC as well. So that's why all three perpendicular bisectors are intersecting in one and only one point, which is a center of circumscribing uh, circle. So. This problem is completely exhausted. It's a very simple, it's probably one of the simplest problems among all these Apollonius problems. The second one is a little bit more complex. So we have a point, two points, and a line. So we have two points and a line. And we have to construct this circle which is tangential to a line and passing through these two points. Okay, the way how um, it can be done is the following. If we will connect A and B, let's assume there is a point of intersection. If they are parallel, situation is actually simpler. All right, anyway, so um, 
let's consider that there is an intersection point. Let's call it M. And this point, tangential point, is, let's say, T. Now, consider these two triangles, uh, M, A, M, T, and uh, T, B, M. Well, one angle is common, right? So the small triangle, it's obtuse, and the big triangle, this is obtuse angle. Now, how about the other? Now, this is tangential line. Now, the tangential line, if this is a tangential line, then this angle is equal to this angle. Um, I don't think I have to prove it because I definitely have proved it, proven it during the regular um, uh, course when I was talking about uh, uh, circle and uh, tangential lines, etc. The way how you can prove it, for instance, is this. You have a central angle, which is twice as big as uh, inscribed angle, right? So half of this angle is equal to this one, right? But now let's consider, let's say this is letter P, uh, angle POT and angle ATM. These angles have mutually perpendicular uh, sides, right? Because OT is radius, it's perpendicular to tangential line MT, and OP is perpendicular to the chord AT. Uh, so we have these two are perpendicular to these two, and that's why they are equal. So that's why these two equals. And since we have two equal uh, angles, uh, this is equal to this, and this is a common. These triangles are similar, right? Similar triangles, which means we can actually arrange a proportion among the sides of these uh, triangles. So, let's say the small triangle, uh, the big one, MT, divided by uh, AT. So these are two uh, sides which form this angle. Now in this case, big sides which are uh, forming this angle, the big, big triangle, the two sides are, the bigger one is BM, and the smaller one is BT. Right? MT to, no, that's wrong, to MT. One second. MT. to 80, to 80, okay, is related as BM to BT, no, I'm right, to BT, right, and uh, also another proportion is uh, in a small triangle AM this is the opposite to to this to MT equals to in this case opposite to this one is MT to uh, BM 
right? So let me just check again. Um, AM is in a small triangle opposite to this angle. MT is in a big triangle opposite to the same angle. Now MT is the bigger side of the small triangle and BM is a bigger side of the small triangle. Now let's see which, we, which one we can use. Actually I think we can use this one because AM and BM AM and BM are known and MT is unknown, right? So MT squared equals to AM times BM. So knowing AM and BM, we can construct MT. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you how. And once MT is constructed, then the whole construction of the circle is connect these two things, get this point, then calculate MT, and you get this point, and then you have all three points, and that's enough to construct a circle. Now, my only open question is how to construct MT, how to construct basically one segment if I know that the square of the segment lengths is the product of these two lengths. Well, this is, uh, again, a known problem, and I'm sure I addressed it before somewhere. If you take, uh, let's say, a right triangle, this is H, this is A, this is B. This is exactly the situation when H square equals A times B. Why? Because these two triangles are similar to each other. Um, obviously, right? Because this angle equals to this one, and this angle equals to this one, um, as mutually perpendicular uh, angles. So this is perpendicular to this, and this is perpendicular to that. And since these are similar triangle, then their cavity are, in this triangle, smaller to bigger. In this triangle is smaller to bigger. And that's why you have the same thing. So, basically, you have to construct an H if you know A and B. So, this is A, this is B, and this is H, right? Now, how to do it? Uh, well, very simply, since this is a right triangle, then all vertices uh, with known hypotenuse are on this circle, right? So we draw the circle on A plus B as a diameter. Now we have A and B, so in this point we just make an altitude until it hits the, uh, the circle. And that would be the length of my H. That would be the length of my MT. So that's the end of this construction. Now, in case a, B is parallel to D. Situation is actually simpler. So in case these lines, this is A, this is B, and this is D, then from uh, Obviously, you understand that if these are parallel, now the radius, which is perpendicular to um, the, uh, the chord, uh, divides it in half, right? And the same radius, which is perpendicular to this one, is perpendicular to this one, it actually goes to a tangent point, yeah, right, point of tangency. So if you take AB and you have a uh, perpendicular bisector, it hits exactly at the point of tangency. And that's the third point. So, that's simpler, right? Okay, so that's the end of this problem, which is two points and a line. Now, two line and a point. Okay, let's consider the lines are intersecting and the point are, the point is somewhere in the middle. And we have to 
construct a circle which is tangential to both lines and passing through the point. All right. So let's call it P. Uh, let's call this one A. Now, what can I say? In this particular case, what's important is that if I will use a scaling with a center at P, my this line and this line during this transformation of scaling will be transformed into themselves, right? Because any point will be stretched or squeezed, but it will be still in the same, on the same line, right? Now, circle will, let's say circle will grow. And point A will go to A prime. So that's what happens if I, let's say, stretch it by a factor of two in this case, or something like this. All right? Now, obviously, the circle will be transformed into a circle. Why? Because the length is of any segment is proportionally increasing uh, during the scaling, right? So, the length of this, which is the radius, it's the same for all these points, right? So, if this is Oh, this is O prime image of my center, then these uh, segments will have the lengths of, the, of these segments multiplied by the scaling factor, all of them. And since these are the same, all of them are multiplied by the same factor, we will have, again, a, uh, an object with all points equidistant from a, some central point, which is a circle. Now, tangency, again, will be transformed into a tangency because it's only one intersection point. One intersection point is basically um, transformed into one intersection point. So, the circle will be still, the bigger circle will be still tangential to the same line. So, what I can suggest right now is the following. Let's just build any circle which is touching these two uh, uh, sides, uh, 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 these two lines. Well, that's simple. Just do an angle bisector, right? You know that. And any uh, point on this uh, angle bisector uh, can be used as, uh, um, as a center. Okay, so we've got this circle. Now, we draw this line PA and it will be A prime intersection with this circle. So now we know actually the factor, because PA we know, and PA prime we also know, since the circle has already been built. And it's exactly the same factor as between PM and PM prime, or PO and PO prime, etc. So using the same factor, we can just squeeze from this center and get this point, to th and get this point this center of the of the circle which we actually need because if we will squeeze everything in such a way that a prime goes back to the a then o prime will go to o and a prime and m prime to m and m prime to n so what's sufficient is to construct this circle draw the line through this given point a until it intersects this one and then squeeze to whatever the factor is needed. Okay, <coughs> variation. Now, obviously, uh, there are different variations because you might actually, instead of this point A, take this point A prime, right? Two double prime. In this case, we have to stretch it a little bit and it will be a circle like this. So it will still touch both lines and it will still go through this point A. So there are different solutions, two solutions in this particular case, because you can take either this or this point in that new circle which we have created. Now, if lines are parallel, both situation is exactly the same. Instead of 
angle bisector, we will have the midline, midline which is parallel uh, to these two, and uh, do basically um, something similar because if this is your point A, you know actually where the center is supposed to be located, and we know the radius because the radius is the distance; it's the same. So using this radius, you can just find these two points and these are two different circles, centers, this one and this one, which constitute the solution. So this is, again, simpler. Okay, so that's my second problem. When we have two lines and, uh, and uh, one point. And finally, for this lecture, three lines. Well, three lines, again, is a very simple thing. They are not parallel, obviously, because the parallel lines will not, is not possible to create a, a circle which is tangential to three par parallel lines. But if they are not parallel lines, it's a triangle, right? And for the triangle, um, I if you need uh, to build a circle which is tangential to all three lines, well, that's the uh, an angle bisectors, obviously, right? But now let's think about it a little bit more. We have more angles. You see, lines are this. They are continuing. So not only these bisectors we have, we also have these bisectors, these bisectors, these bisectors. So we have new points, actually, right? So we can have uh, a circle which is tangential to all three lines from the outside, right? So, we have one, two, three, four. Four different solutions. We have four different circles depending on which angle we use as, as a bisector, right? Okay, now to prove that uh, bisector is uh, a locus is very similar to the one which we were using for inscribed, uh, I mean rather cir circumscribed uh, circles um, in the very beginning. So I don't want to spend any time on this, it's simple. Well, basically these are three simplest problems um, among Apollonius problems. These are only where points and lines are used as given, and the circle is supposed to be constructed. Um, then the next lecture I will probably spend uh, talking about um, the transformation of inversion, which is symmetry relative to a circle, which would allow us to reduce problems when the circles are given, one, two, or three circles are given, back into the uh, lines and points problem. All right, that's it for today. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on unisor.com. Very useful. Uh, and the notes are not like complete proof or anything like this. I left a couple of uh, statements like prove it yourself. I do suggest you to, to try to do it. It's very, very good exercise. Uh, thanks very much and good luck.